Hey artists and makers, I'm Amy and on this channel we talk about how your creative gift has value. This week I went down to Round Top, Texas to check out Texas Antiques Week. It happens twice a year in a little town called Round Top that's sort of between Houston and Austin. And it's a huge gathering of antiques dealers, flea marketers, artists, everything you can imagine. It is so much fun to go down, and if you're anywhere near here in the beginning of April or the beginning of October, I strongly encourage you to try to find a way to get down there and check it out. But for those of you who haven't had a chance to, or those of you who just want to see what was happening last week, I, I took a little bit of video while I was at one of my favorite spots, which is called Marburger Farm. And it's an area that has a whole bunch of different barns full of antiques and artists and all kinds of wonderful things. It also has permanent buildings that are cute, old-fashioned looking buildings. And it's an area that has a lot of highly curated and beautiful booths set up that people have. Some parts of Round Top are going to be more like just a giant flea market. And some of them have even turned into areas where it's just a whole bunch of stuff that's not necessarily antique or art or valuable. It's it's a little hit or miss. There's different areas. You'll If you go down there, you'll find areas that you like and you'll find the ones you want to go back to and you'll find your favorite dealers. And so one of my favorite places to visit over and over is called Marlboro Farms. And so I took some video to show you just kind of what the place looks like and what Round Top is like and the surrounding area. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you some examples of motifs that I think are useful lessons for us. Any of us who ever set up a booth or a space that we want to show our art or our design to its best advantage. There were some overriding themes that I saw several times and picked out in, in some of the best and prettiest booths. And so I'm going to tell you a few of those and show you some examples of just kind of how I saw them being done down at Marburger last week. So as I said, this is Marburger Farm in Round Top, Texas, one of my favorite places to go. They have food, they have all kinds of vendors, and they always have fun events going on during Texas Antiques Week, and a lot of other places do too. It's a big party and it's a lot of fun to go and visit. And Texas Antiques Week occurs in between a couple of different little cities sprinkled around and farms just across the countryside end up having all these pop-up events happening there and all kinds of people come from all over the country to set up their wares and to shop. So it's a lot of fun and the rest of the year you're basically just looking at farmhouses and fields and little country roads but this time of year it turns into a big exciting event. The two cities that it's kind of spread out between are Round Top and Warrington, Texas. All right, the first way to make your booth stand out in a group of other displays of other people's work is to have one large eye-catching motif, some big showstopper, something that catches people's eye when they're walking by and makes them notice your booth or your space and stop and take a look at it. I'll show you some examples that I saw while I was there. My favorite example is this sassy mannequin flanked by these two huge prints. But here's some carnival art. There's also large scale paintings and beside it a zebra head. In this booth, the person had put a large quilt and painting the striking dark red color that brought you into the booth. And in this one, they did twig art. They had created this huge mirror on the wall back there that brought you in. In this booth, they did plants, which aren't necessarily large things, but they had created this huge selfie station out of plants and flowers that people were taking pictures in front of. The second technique is to do multiple repeating motifs, small matching pieces over and over again and put them all together in a grid or a line. What this does is it has the same effect of having one large eye-catching motif, one big piece. You're ending up creating one big piece from six small pieces or 10 small pieces or whatever. And it also gives people uh, a lot of ideas about how they can use your work. They could use four pieces together. They could use 10 pieces or 12 pieces together. It also helps you sell multiples of something when you show it that way because when they're put together like that, it has a really great 
interior design feel and it makes the space look really elegant. Okay, the third really effective decorating or display technique to use is neutrals plus one to two accent colors. If you set up your booth in this way, it really looks more curated and planned and decorated than if it's just kind of whatever colors you have all mixed together. Having neutrals and then having an overriding color theme just gives your booth a much more planned and curated and elegant look. Here the vendor chose neutrals plus that gorgeous dark orange color and they added orange in a couple more spots to really make the color stand out. In this case, the vendor has that soft green as an accent color with the neutrals. Here we've got pink in three different places repeating along with beautiful neutrals. And in this booth, kind of a brighter pink is the accent with a lot of other white and light colored pieces. This booth has a pop of yellow as the accent color. And in this case, that soft green repeats several times and brings your eye across the booth in a pretty way. The final way to stand out when you're in a group showing is to be different, to show something that's in a really specific little niche or to show something that is a complimentary product but not the product that almost everybody else in the show has displayed in their space. For example, in Round Top, it is mostly home decor, antiques, furnishing type items, but there are a few people who will sell jewelry and there are one or two people who will sell apparel. And it'll be things that are gonna to appeal to the same type of typical buyer who's going to be coming to the show, but you may get more attention at this show if you're the only apparel line than if you go to a show where there are 20 different lines of clothing. So sometimes that can be a smart move to be complimentary, but different from the normal stuff that's showing there. Again, this vendor is selling plants and plants aren't antiques, but they can sell to the same group of people who are shopping for home decor and furnishing items. And this vendor is an artist who uses a lot of vintage fabrics or has a vintage vibe to the animals she makes. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little trip down to Round Top, Texas. If you do have a chance to go there, one thing I recommend is make your reservations now. It's hard to find a hotel because it's a tiny town and the surrounding towns, there aren't a whole lot of hotels there. In fact, most of this area is just a bunch of fields and pastures all the rest of the year when there's not this market going on. And so, Find a place to stay. It's hard to find one at the last minute, so this is the kind of trip you want to kind of plan ahead for. If you do get a chance to go, I hope you enjoy it. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you've gone to Round Top or if you're interested in going to it, what kinds of things you would be looking for. I'd also like to ask you to subscribe and click on the little bell for notifications so you can join us while we continue to talk about art and creativity and support each other as artists. Thanks.